This video looks at how to set up and use the pendulum testing machine and highlights the key factors that affect the reliability of the results. It's been designed to complement the written guidelines, which are an essential reference and is not intended to be a substitute for training. The location is one that is used by shod and barefoot pedestrians, so following the guidelines we'll be testing with two different sliders. You'll need to assess what measurements are required depending on the activities at the location, but in many cases you'll only need to test based on shod pedestrians. The three machines shown in this video can all be used in the laboratory and out on site, but whichever machine you use it should be calibrated annually. We'll be looking at testing using Slider 96 rubber, which is designed to measure slip potential for shod pedestrians. We've used the KSS machine, but we could equally have used the Munro Stanley or Wessex testers. First, we assemble the tester, ensuring the back foot and the pendulum arm are securely fixed. The feet should be adjusted so that the pendulum frame is set as low to the floor as possible. The pendulum is then carefully levelled, taking care to avoid parallax error by looking down on the level from directly above. When you're sure it's level, the locking nuts on the feet need to be tightened. The zero must be checked and adjusted each time the pendulum is set up. With the arm raised so that it won't catch the surface, the arm is released as if taking a measurement and the finishing position of the needle is noted. Precise adjustments can be made using the friction ring, which is then locked in position by the outer ring. The zero is rechecked and the process repeated until a consistent zero reading is obtained. Here we are using a new slider. The re-preparation of a worn slider 96 is described in the guidelines in section 4.1. A slider with one used edge can be turned over so that the other new edge can be used. With the glass plate in position, the P400 paper is secured in place and the contact area, commonly referred to as the footprint, is set. The footprint is measured with the footprint ruler. The marks on the ruler are lined up with the trailing edge of the aluminium backing plate. This is an iterative process. It relies on repetition with fine adjustments each time until the ideal position is found. Here, the adjustment is by means of raising and lowering the top of the pendulum, but the exact method of pendulum adjustment varies across the three machines. Carry out 10 swings across the P400 paper, followed by resetting the footprint and 10 further swings. We're not interested in the readings obtained at this stage. The next step is to use the pink lapping film to give a final preparation of the working edge. The process is the same as for the P400 paper, but all 20 swings should be with the paper wetted and there is no need to reset the footprint part way through. We now move from preparation to verification. Using a fresh area of pink lapping film, set the footprint and measure the pendulum test value or PTV in wet conditions. Make a record of the readings. Follow the same testing sequence on the glass plate and then the Pavigres tile, recording all the numbers. Check your readings for each of the test materials against the verification PTV's table number 3 in the guidelines document. You're now ready to test the flooring. With the sample holder removed, the footprint can be set on the floor surface.
The test procedure in the guidelines dictates that the first measurements are taken in dry conditions. A test consists of eight swings. The first three are noted but not included in the calculation of the median. The procedure requires tests to be carried out in three different directions on the dry surface. This is normally at 45 degrees and 90 degrees to the original direction. The surface is then wetted and tests are carried out in the same three directions. The wet readings should not be carried out over the same area of floor as the dry readings. For the second and third directions, here we've switched to the Munro Stanley and then the Wessex testers to show that they can all be used on site. For further information, you can contact the UK Slip Resistance Group at www.ukslipresistance.org.uk. This is one of four videos that cover the use of pendulum testers with different sliders in the laboratory and on site. Please remember that these videos should be used in conjunction with the written guidelines and are not a substitute for training.